Good morning everyone, Kay here on the homestead and I am cleaning up the sunroom. It is March the 2nd. I would be expecting to do this April 2nd, but it would seem that we are a full month ahead of schedule weather-wise. It is warm and wet outside and we also have a wind advisory. So it's too soon for me to take my citrus trees outside. But I just wanted to bring you up to date about how hard it's been this winter trying to take care of my citrus. Of course, my sunroom is small. It's basically like a little sitting room with, with big windows. Uh, but I brought my trees in for, for the winter because I don't have a greenhouse. And so it just kind of becomes all piled up. And I'm going to clear that out. As you can see, my amaryllis is blooming. And I have another one over here that's about to pop. It's going to be red. But I've had a real problem with mealybug. So I knew I had to do something systemic because the spray was not beating it back enough. The leaves were still falling off. Every joint where there was a leaf, it would the next day it would be gone. Someone on my channel uh, left a comment and suggested neem oil. So I saw that the neem, oh here, um, the neem oil is made by Bonide and I know some of their products are OMRI listed but neem oil is of course good for plants. Oh this is for organic gardening however this is also Bonide, they're both Bonide and this one I do not see that it's for organic gardening but it's the systemic form so it's powder and you dilute it into water and it lasts for up to eight weeks. It's supposed to kill aphids, white flies and other insects listed. I did look inside and mealyworm is one of them and not only was it not blooming it was losing leaves every day so it, the roots are not going to be taking up that much water so when you use this product you, you, you know you need to water it well and so the watering that I did on the kefir like three weeks ago, it's still wet in the pot. So I can't water it again and it, it's still coming. So last night I had to use the, the systemic on the, well I used it on all the citrus last night because I know they're all affected. Excuse me, ow. You see, some citrus have thorns, and you've got to be very careful. Um, my lemon tr tree has thorns. But I just went ahead, my lemon tree, I was disappointed in the tree that was sent to me, the lemon, because it was, um, it was a split stem. See, all of these are kind of shiny. Now this branch, I noticed a few weeks ago, this is a rogue branch. This formation of the, the leaves are not the same as the tree. They look different and they have big major thorns. And this was the only branch on the whole tree that had thorns. This was on the mandarin. You see how much energy is going up into this branch and I don't think this produces fruit. I could be wrong, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But back in California, I used to take these off. Now, some some plants have thorns all over, like the lemon, but I just took the one off so that the energy could go to the branches that may produce fruit. This is the kefir. It's a Thai lime, and the leaves are actually what is prized in Thai cooking. So the last thing you want is some slimy sap bugs on the leaves, right? I still have some evidence of that, even after the systemic and the spray. And all I can hope is that I can correct this when I get the plants outside. It's much easier to do a nice soapy 
spray outside. I mean, soap would take care of it. It's just, it's really hard to start spraying soapy water in your house. Here is the Kishu Mandarin. I haven't gotten any fruit off of this since it was in the ground about five years ago in California. I dug it up, put it in a pot when I sold the house. I know that it's the fruit is delicious because I had it that one time, so I'm just hoping that I can figure out the best way to get fruit off of this. I have changed the soil. I have done so many different things to try to get these things to be healthy. But sitting inside, it's tough. Now, you see this is straggly here. I'm probably going to want to do a good pruning on this. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'm just going to wait until I get them out on the deck when all danger of frost is passed. You can see how I really trimmed back the lemon because, like I said, they sent me a tree that had a split right at the base. And that makes it difficult, especially for a crowded sunroom. You know, I need something to just grow straight up like the, the mandarin. It's so well behaved and this is not. And it had a lot of other branches coming off down here. So I trimmed all of those off. I trimmed off all of the branches that were crossing one another. And you, you, you just want to do that. And of course it, it gained airflow and I think it improved the shape. And I do have, fortunately, this one. There is a cut here, but this is going to be my main stem going up. And I'm going to try to, to train it to go more up. But <laughs> how much up is it going to do when it, it splits right at the base, you know? That's, and then, and then this one, which is the one going straight up, it splits off one, two, ow, three, four, and then one going up there. So it's, it's not ideal. <laughs> and then this one lost all its leaves. I went ahead and trimmed off. I'm not sure why I trimmed this one off. Oh yeah, I trimmed it off because it was coming away out this way and it didn't seem balanced. Look, it looks like, yeah, there's another spot of this stuff, see? It's so hard to see them all when you've got a crowded little sunroom. The kefir lime is the one that really took the beating. Every day there were more leaves falling off of this. Sometimes they fall off this or this whole thing. Of course, if you lose the leaves, you lose the benefit. But this soil is still wet, and that's from weeks ago, because there's not no uptake, you know. So I do turn the fan on in here. Probably what I should do is change the soil. Just take it outside and change as much of the soil that wants to drop off and put in fresh, dry, and that might help. All I can do at this point is just spray it because I can't put any more water in there because that could kill it. If there's one thing citrus hates, it's wet roots just sitting in wet. I did do this one because yesterday because if you if you see it's starting to not too bad though. But it does have some of the white stuff. You know. Right here. And the only just absolutely beautiful showstopper, <laughs> total pleasure, is the amaryllis. Wow. And then this one over here. Look at this stunner. This is going to be a knockout. And got a second one coming up. Both of them have a second. I feel one in here, and the two major ones are right here, but that's going to be stunning. Let me turn the light back on so you can see this begonia. 
Look at this. This has been blooming for a month. Is that the most stunning thing you have ever seen? Just gorgeous. And you know, I hardly watered it all winter, and I think it's prospered because I just didn't water it. This I got from the Middle Tennessee plant swap, and I really need to hang it up. I don't have hangers from the ceiling, and it's just kind of ridiculous. Uh, the cranberry hibiscus did put out flowers. I'm hoping that seeds are going to come out of those. I'm just kind of hoping and leaving them alone. The dragon fruit cactus, it's got some of those shiny spots right here. That's the sap of this mealy worm dropping off of the citrus. But then what it will happen is it'll get in these joints See, oh yeah, see here? Aha. Uh -huh. See here? This stuff? Can you see that? It's just almost like wet cottony stuff. Right there? Yeah. Wait. You know it is when you spray it and it washes off. You know, that's what it was. But it loves the joints. But like I said, it's just, it's kind of a drag to be spraying stuff in your, in your house. Fortunately, this floor is brick. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have it in here. I also wanted to show you my fig. And look, 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 look. Oh my gosh, I just saw that. Isn't that awesome? Is one over here? No. I had so many figs, I gave them away to anybody walking by in California. I had two big fig trees right on the street, and I would just give them away. You know, it had no leaves, of course, and it was just sitting here all winter, and then it's taken the cue. Hey, it's time. And it's just leafing out. No problem with the mealyworm, and my moringa's still alive. Can you believe that? So maybe it'll get going when I take it outside. So what else? Anything else good? The miracle fruit I tried to grow. I've got two little tiny, tiny little things. Just never took off. I don't know why. This one a little bit more promising, but it hasn't really changed in a month. This is my holiday cactus. Believe it or not, it still has a bloom. These are all amaryllis, and they're putting off these side shoots, so I don't know if that means it's going to be a real one or just a leaf. Um, but I've got all of these, and I've got that one. i got a big one coming up here. I think that's going to be red, too. Okay, I, well, I also have a red and white one that is stunning, so I'm not sure which one that is. Well, I just thought we would uh, go over some tips and things about keeping plants inside for the winter. You know, they're kind of in a dormant period. They kind of know that it's winter. You might get some blooms. You might even get uh, a piece of fruit here and there. Um, I don't <laughs> here and the temperature stays the same as the house which is about 68 degrees I do turn on a fan to get some circulation you know um, I don't know if that helps the mealy bug it seems like when it's there it's there I I, <sighs> I did so much spraying last year uh, fall before I brought them in. I gave them a complete soapy shower and um, Changed some I, I changed the let's see I up potted them So I put in a lot of fresh soil to this to the root ball and still I Got the mealyworm. So why do I do it? <laughs> well part of it is sentiment, you know, because I had such fabulous 
uh, well I had a fabulous lemon tree and orange tree that's what started my whole gardening life in California of course those were long in the ground and they stayed there but everything that I could put in a pot everything that I could I actually took them out of the pots uh, carved down the root ball put them in garbage bags and packed 25 plants including all my citrus um, into the back of my Prius yeah I had everything you see there plus a lot more uh, a lot more that hasn't made it uh, the begonia I picked up in well I just picked up cuttings when I went through Lubbock um, so I'm just happy that plant has taken off and it looks lovely and hopefully it will put out a lot more blooms um, it's a battle for me and I am sure this is the same in a greenhouse Mm. and a greenhouse of course that's a whole other consideration I've thought long and hard about having a greenhouse I would love to have a greenhouse for if you're new to my channel the reason I don't have a greenhouse is because number one I have no flat ground here the you know they excavated where the house is sitting and the shop is sitting but that's the only flat ground so it would have to be excavated. The sun is always over there. So if I put it over there, it would get not that much sun. And um, the best sun is right in the middle of my front yard. So I would be looking out. The, the reason, the, one of the main reasons I bought this place, other than the fact that it had water, a cistern, didn't realize it was going to be such a problem but anyway I do have the cistern building if I can ever get it prepared and wood burning stove had to have that and a front porch I said if I'm moving back to my home state I am going to have a front porch with a view now that is hard to come by let me tell you I looked I looked at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of listings online and of course I was trying to do this from California and I made several trips over here and looked at a lot of houses and by far this was the best for what I was interested in you know I lived in noisy cities for 40 years and I didn't want I wanted quiet you hear that bird so <laughs> oh it's sticky mmm this is cacao and raw honey from my nephew's honey business he has honey he has a lot of beehives and he sells honey and it's called duck river honey oh it's just march the second so anything can happen i mean two years ago when i first came and i didn't have my truck we were snowed in i was snowed in for eight days <clears throat> eight days <coughs> I'm sorry I get choked up thinking about it it was so much fun I did that snowman remember George I named him George and after an old friend of mine in New York and uh, <laughs> and <laughs> you know because my driveway goes down and in a dip and then back up I knew there was no way I was getting that well, I wasn't even going to be able to get the Prius out of the out of the garage because there was this much snow with the bottom was ice. So I just said, hey, I'm fine. I don't need anything. And it was a great feeling knowing that I had enough, you know, to take care of myself, you know, even if the power had gone out. So why grow citrus? You know, I was watching Danny at Deep South, Danny and Wanda's video this morning about they're moving their citrus out. I think it's too soon here because we don't know what could happen. His citrus are in those straight up and down pots that are very and heavier. He lifts, he carries them around with his tractor, see. I can't, you know. Mine are as big as I can handle, period. And they're curved. So... 
If I have them on the casters, they easily blow over, and even if there's a big wind, they blow over. I picked them up probably a dozen times uh, before I brought them in last year. So, you know, I can't take them out yet. I'd love to. When I do, then I'll just scrub the floor and clean everything, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I don't take the mealy bug back in there when I go back in the fall. But the reason to grow citrus, it's very important. If you haven't started, you should start. You should get yourself one tree. Even if you just have window light, you, you, you can add a grow light. Try to get yourself a citrus tree. We need to be growing our own citrus for the vitamin C. Just in case, we don't know what's gonna happen. You know, every week there is a, uh, more than, every week there are several, uh, food plants that spontaneously burn and we never hear why. There's no investigation that we know of. Um, there's train derailments, chemical spills, there's stuff being sprayed in the sky. It's all being acknowledged now and uh, we just don't know, you know, where our food's going to come from if we're not growing it ourselves. So if you have your own citrus trees then you have a source of vitamin C and we need that. That's the numero uno because vitamin C goes right through your body. So you need a constant source of vitamin C to stay healthy and, and fight back against whatever pathogens that are out there. So try to start if you haven't already and get yourself one tree and just start there. Fall in love with your tree fall in love with when it blooms and read up about it, you know, best best practices. You know, if you if you suddenly if you start from scratch and you go get 10 trees, then you really have to do a deep dive because you know, that's an investment and you want you don't want them to die and you you want them to produce for you. So, um, figure out, you know, the best way to care for your trees. So, what have I produced from my citrus trees since I've been here? Calamandin lime. And I made calamandin lime marmalade last year. And I will put the link, let's see, right up there. Check that out. That was so great. That's the first time I've made marmalade. And it... Um, I don't even think it ever went into the cabinet because it, I gave some away and then just I just made the little ones, the little six ounce, and they just went like that. I hope that's helpful. If it is, I hope you share my channel and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, scroll down and click all for all notifications so you won't miss an episode here on the homestead. I try to cover my life here on the homestead with the cats. I have five cats and one indoor senior and f and the four siblings in that l stay in the garage at night they're out there waiting to get out and uh i'm just doing the best i can here and i wish i could do so much more i wish i was 40 and i could just go like a a train engine around here but it's just not possible i'm doing what i can and i'm, I'm hoping that's going to be good enough Thank you so much. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.